Hi everyone, I'm Flag on HG, and normally I do hardcore nuzlocks, usually with some type of twist. This video is the second in a series of nuzlocke analysis and tutorial videos that will hopefully teach you various ways to improve and refine your nuzlocke skills in gameplay. In my previous video, I highlighted six general tips that you can use to improve your skills. I haven't quite figured out exactly everything that this series will be covering, and in future videos I might go back and discuss very simple concepts for beginner nuzlockers, but for this video, a lot of people seem to be very interested in an in-depth discussion on pivoting. So, we'll cover the general principles of pivoting, including why you might want to pivot, we'll break down what makes a Pokémon a good pivot, and I'll provide examples of some good pivoting cores that you can fit into most of your nuzlocks. And then we'll also go into some pitfalls and things to avoid when pivoting. By the end, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what Ace Trainer Ross meant when he said, PIVOT! If you enjoy watching the video, liking the video and subscribing would do a lot to help me validate my own self-worth. But only provide me that emotional support if you want to. And before we start, this is just a reminder that like everything on my channel, these are just my opinions and thoughts. So, I don't know. Be nice. Okay, let's get started. What is pivoting? Pivoting refers to the concept of using one Pokémon specifically to bait your opponent into using a specific move that will then let you switch into another Pokémon. One Pokémon is used to pivot to the other Pokémon that is generally better equipped at handling the opposing Pokémon. Of course, pivoting is infinitely more important when playing on set mode, where you don't get free switches after each of your opponent's Pokémon faints. Pivoting can still be useful in switch mode, but for the rest of this video, I'll be talking about it as if we're playing on set mode. In a Nuzlocke, pivoting is predicated on abusing the logic system of the AI that you're facing. Let's first consider an example of an online battle where you are playing against another human being. Let's say you have a Hitmonchan and they have a Gyarados. Your Hitmonchan knows the elemental punches. Now the obvious play here is to use Thunder Punch to one-shot the Gyarados, who is of course four times weak to electricity. But your opponent, knowing that you probably have Thunder Punch, might predict that you'll use Thunder Punch and switch in their Flagon. So you, knowing that your opponent knows that you probably have Thunder Punch, might want to predict the switch to Flagon and use Ice Punch instead. And if your opponent is good at the game, they might actually predict that you plan on using Ice Punch, and so they may opt to actually stay in and punish your prediction. It's a huge mind game. In this instance, your opponent has to evaluate the odds of you deciding to go for the obvious play of Thunder Punch or trying to predict their move and going for an Ice Punch. This is incredibly difficult and requires a certain level of intuition that the best competitive Pokémon players have. Fortunately, when fighting an AI opponent in a Nuzlocke, their logic is much more surface level and they actually can't predict switches. If the AI was in control of the Hitmonchan in this instance, it would always go for Thunder Punch and it would never go for Ice Punch so it would be completely safe to switch in Flagon. Knowing that the AI has this simplistic logic, we're able to exploit it in order to set up pivots that give us relatively safe switches between different Pokémon. So what does pivoting look like? Well, there are virtually limitless possibilities for pivoting, and how you choose to use pivoting will largely depend on the structure and the needs of your team in any given moment. Pivoting can be as simple as using a Grass-type to bait a Fire-type move so that you can get a relatively safe switch into a Water-type but it can also be more complex. You might first want to switch from your Fire-type, who baits a Ground-type move, to your Flying-type, who is immune to that Ground-type move. Then you might want to switch to your Steel-type, who resists the Rock-type move baited by your Flying-type. This way, you can safely switch from your Fire-type to your Steel-type without having to take any damage from a super effective Ground-type move. In this example, the Flying-type Pokémon is used exclusively for pivoting. Identifying when a pivot is needed and how to pull it off is a lot easier said than done though. So let's start by looking at a few pivoting examples from some of my previous challenges, and I'll explain how and why I used a pivot in each case. Oftentimes, pivoting is used to get a Pokémon in for free, or without taking any damage. For example, in my recent baby-only run of Platinum, I used Elekid to bait an Earthquake from Candice's Piloswine, letting me safely switch in Mantike and take out the Piloswine with a Surf. We'll talk more about immunities and avoiding damage this way in a second. In certain situations, though, it might be impossible to get a Pokémon in without taking any damage, but pivoting can still be used to reduce the damage taken on the switch. Consider this fight against my rival from my Platinum Cutemon challenge. My rival sends out his Infernape against my Raichu. I want to bring in Golduck to take out the Infernape with the Surf. However, Infernape outspeeds me, so I know that I'll be taking two attacks with my Golduck. 
If I switch directly to Golduck from Raichu, I'll be hit by a Brick Break. If Infernape gets a critical hit on the switch, then another Brick Break might kill Golduck before he can get off a Surf. So instead, I can first pivot to Drifblim, who is immune to Brick Break. This forces Infernape to use Flame Wheel, which Golduck resists. Now even if Infernape crits a Brick Break, we'll survive and be able to finish him off with a Surf. Pivoting like this is great for reducing the chances of being done in by a poorly timed critical hit. And it's also great for avoiding other types of RNG. I used this example in my previous video, but I'll go over it again here as well. Consider my fight against the Totem Kamo'o in my Nuzlocke of Ultra Sun. I want to lead Gyarados to lower Kamo'o's attack with Intimidate. Ultimately, I want to switch to Carbink, who I'll use to Toxic Stall out the Kamo'o since it takes very little damage from most of Kamo'o's attacks. However, Gyarados baits Thunder Punch from Kamo'o. Thunder Punch won't do that much damage to Carbink, especially thanks to my Leftovers recovery, but Thunder Punch has a 10% chance to paralyze. While that isn't very high, if it happens, and then I get repeatedly fully paralyzed with Carbink, Carbink could be in a lot of trouble. So instead of directly pivoting to Carbink, I can first switch to Gastrodon, who is immune to Thunder Punch. This way, when I switch to Carbink, I'll never get paralyzed. In this instance, it actually works out even better, because Kamo'o goes for Dragon Claw against Gastrodon, which Carbink is immune to. Always think about how a pivot can help reduce the chances of losing a Pokemon or a run to unlucky RNG. And finally, pivoting might also be used explicitly to trigger an ability. The most common example of this is Intimidate pivoting, where switching in a Pokemon with Intimidate can be brought in to instantly lower the attack stat of the opposing Pokemon. This then makes it easier for another Pokemon to come in and finish the job. Be careful though, because critical hits will bypass those stat drops. Consider the fight against Winona in my Emerald Trash Lock. Her Altaria can be incredibly scary if you aren't able to easily knock it out before it sets up a Dragon Dance. In this instance, I wasn't able to do that. So what I did instead was repeatedly pivot between Mawile and Masquerain, both of which have Intimidate. This allowed me to repeatedly lower Altaria's attack every turn as it was baited into using Aerial Ace on Masquerain, which Mawile resists, and Earthquake on Mawile, which Masquerain is immune to. I even paired this strategy with a Kabutops, who has the ability Battle Armor to block critical hits. Other examples of abilities that you might want to bait into activating could be Volt Absorb, Flash Fire, Defiant, or Guts. What makes a good pivot Pokemon? Ultimately, virtually any Pokemon can act as a pivot in at least some situations. But some Pokemon are naturally better at pivoting than others. The best thing for a pivoting Pokemon to have is immunities. Immunities predominantly come from two places, a Pokemon's typing and a Pokemon's ability. Let's talk about typing immunities. Normal types are immune to ghost type moves. Ghost types are immune to normal and fighting type moves. Flying types are immune to ground moves. Dark types are immune to psychic moves. Fairy types are immune to dragon moves, and steel types are immune to poison moves. If your Pokemon has a type immunity, the AI will almost never use a move of that type. Alright, now let's talk about ability immunities. Ability immunities often offer additional type immunities such as Levitate that makes a Pokemon immune to ground type moves, or Volt Absorb that makes a Pokemon immune to electric type moves. In these instances, the AI will not use a move that your Pokemon has an ability immunity to, if the AI knows that you have that ability. For example, Flygon can only have Levitate, so the AI will almost never use a Ground-type move against Flygon. However, Bronzong can have the ability Levitate or the ability Heat Proof. In this instance, the AI might actually go for a Ground-type move, but once the AI has discovered that your Bronzong has Levitate, it won't use a Ground-type move again. This logic does differ a little bit from game to game, so you do need to be a little more cautious when taking advantage of an ability immunity. There are other more niche immunities that can come from abilities as well, which may help in certain pivoting setups. For example, using a Pokemon with the ability Own Tempo can guarantee that you won't accidentally switch your Pokemon into a Confuse Ray, or a Pokemon with Clear Body can make sure that you won't accidentally switch into a move like Scary Face or Screech. Based on what I just said, it stands to reason that Pokemon with multiple immunities are really great at being pivots. So for example, thanks to its ability Wonder Guard, Shedinja has the most immunities in the game, and is therefore a phenomenal Pokemon for pivoting, though Nuzlocke rules make obtaining one a little bit difficult and questionable. Pokemon like Drifblim, Ms. Magius, Rotom, and Gengar in earlier generations have immunities to fighting type moves, normal type moves, and ground type moves and you can generally guarantee catching at least one of those Pokemon in most of your Nuzlocke's. 
Similarly, a Jellicent with the water absorbability has three immunities to fighting, normal, and water type moves, and is a guaranteed capture in Unova Nuzlocks. There are also many moderately common Pokemon that sport two immunities, including Bronzong with Levitate, Flygon, Crocodile, Togekiss, and Sawsbuck with Sapsipper, all of which can be great for pivoting. But of course, when you can't get a specific immunity, resistances are better than nothing. So always think about which Pokemon have the resistances that you need for a given fight. Steel types, for example, tend to have an insane number of resistances and decent bulk, meaning that they are great candidates for pivoting. Pokemon like Magnemite, Exadrill, Fortress, and Lucario can usually be picked up with relative ease in most games. When you can't take advantage of an immunity, bulky Pokemon tend to make the best pivots, as they can tank multiple hits, allowing them to be used as pivots multiple times in the same battle. Generally, a Pokemon will be better at tanking either physical or special attacks based on their typing and base stats. When building a team and deciding who to bring into each battle, consider whether you will need a Pokemon to pivot through physical attacks, or special attacks, or both. There are usually an abundant number of physical and special bulky Pokemon that you can get in your Nuzlocke. Though specially bulky Pokemon can be a bit more rare, especially in the early game. Pokemon like Graveler, Bulldor, Tangela, Sandslash, and Slowbro are all pretty solid common physically defensive walls, whereas Tentacruel, Blissey, Snorlax, Mantine, and Audino are all easily accessible specially defensive walls, depending on the game. There are a lot of ways to pull off a good pivot, and the best Nuzlockers will be able to identify pivots for specific battles. But if you're listening to all this and thinking, there's no possible way I'm going to figure this out, let's highlight at least a few pivoting cores and strategies that you should be able to easily implement into most of your Nuzlocks. The idea with this pivoting combo is to have an electric type Pokemon that baits a ground type move. This allows you to safely switch to a flying type Pokemon or a Pokemon with Levitate. Likewise, a flying type Pokemon will usually bait an electric type move, which gives you a free switch into a ground type. An example of an easily accessible version of this is Jolteon and Gyarados in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Gyarados is easily acquired by fishing with an old rod in virtually any route, and Jolteon can be selected as your Celadon City encounter by getting the Gift Eevee. This also works in Heart Gold and Soul Silver and Platinum, since you can get a Gift Eevee in these games as well. Gyarados is great at covering Jolteon's ground type weaknesses by getting a free switch in and retaliating with a water type attack. Jolteon's Volt Absorb ability has great synergy with Gyarados's times 4 weakness to electric types. You can also slap a ground type Pokemon onto this duo to make it an even more solid core. Ground types are also immune to the electric types targeted at Gyarados if Jolteon isn't able to easily counter the opposing Pokemon. Ground types like Graveler, Nidoking, Swampert, Whiskash, and Gastrodon are all pretty common in games where at least one of Gyarados and Jolteon can be easily obtained. This is a pretty straightforward pivoting combo. A normal type is immune to super effective ghost moves targeted at your ghost type, and a ghost type is immune to super effective fighting moves targeted at your normal type, as well as just being immune to normal moves in general. The abundance of normal and fighting type moves in most Pokemon games makes ghost type Pokemon excellent for Nuzlocke. A great example of this normal plus ghost combo is Raticate and Haunter, since both are really common in the games that they can be found in. Raticate gets access to Crunch to retaliate against ghost types, and Haunter can hit fighting types for super effective damage with Psychic, plus it's immune to ground type moves as well. The Fairy Steel Dragon core is primarily a core in competitive Pokemon, but it can be applied to building Nuzlocke pivoting strategies as well. These three types do a great job at covering each other's weaknesses. Fairy is immune to dragon type moves targeted at your own dragon type Pokemon. Steel is immune to poison type moves targeted at your fairies and also resists super effective steel moves. And then dragon types resist fire and also tend to resist fighting type moves and be immune to ground type moves, all of which hit steel type Pokemon for super effective damage. The only problem with this core is that these types tend to be somewhat rare and difficult to guarantee in most Nuzlocke's, especially in generations when fairy types don't exist. If you do get a Steel type though, they can be incredible for pivoting with just about any other type of Pokemon. Especially in earlier generations, Steel types have a tremendous amount of resistances and tend to be quite bulky. Steel types are usually especially great at tanking physical attacks. Pairing a Steel type with a Flying type is particularly useful, as Steel types can usually check the Ice and Rock type moves that are targeted against Flying type Pokemon, while Flying type Pokemon are immune to the Ground type attacks targeted at Steel type Pokemon. 
Exadrill, which is a guaranteed capture in any Unova Nuzlocke, is a great pairing with any of the number of flying types in those games. It also sports an electric immunity, making it a perfect switch for the flying type. As previously mentioned, Intimidate Pivoting refers to pivoting with a Pokémon that has the ability Intimidate to reduce the attack of the opposing Pokémon. It's a pretty straightforward strategy. Switch the Pokémon with Intimidate in on an attack that it is immune to, or at least resists, and then switch to another Pokémon, which will now take less damage thanks to the drop in attack. As long as it doesn't crit. Pokémon with Intimidate and an immunity are excellent Pokémon. Gyarados is great for this reason. Crocodile can have Intimidate as an ability, and it has two immunities. But even Pokémon like Masquerain and Mightyana can be used as Intimidate pivots in the right circumstances. Other common Intimidate Pokémon that you can pick up in your Nuzlocks are the Starly and Shinx line in Platinum, the Growlithe line in Fire Red and Leaf Green, and the Lillipup line in Black and White. Pairing these Pokémon with Shell Armor and Battle Armor Pokémon that can't be crit is an amazing strategy, though these Pokémon are much harder to come by. One final pivoting strategy to consider is Pokémon that have access to switching moves. These are moves like U-Turn or Volt Switch that cause the Pokémon to switch out after using the move. These moves are great for pivoting, because they can do a bit of damage to your opponent, which might be useful for breaking sturdy or getting just enough chip damage to guarantee a one-shot from another Pokémon. But they can also be incredibly useful for pivoting Pokémon in for free. When you switch directly from one Pokémon to another, the switch always happens BEFORE the opponent uses a move. However, if your Pokémon that is using U-Turn is slower than your opponent, you can first tank a hit from the opponent, then use U-Turn, and bring in your next Pokémon completely safely. The same goes for moves like Baton Pass and Teleport, though this also only works if you are slower than your opponent. But if you want a really big brain strategy, what you can do is you can attach an Iron Ball or a Full Incense to the Pokémon using U-Turn to make sure that you always go after your opponent. In later games, a lot of Pokémon learn U-Turn, and the use of reusable TMs makes many Pokémon viable for this strategy. Same goes for almost any electric type with Volt Switch from Generation 5 and on. Magnezone with Sturdy is a great example of a slow Volt Switch pivot. In earlier generations, you'll need to rely on Pokémon with Baton Pass, like Mr. Mime, Apom, Plusle, and Minin. To close out this discussion on pivoting, I want to mention a few common pitfalls that you should avoid when planning pivots. The first is that you shouldn't assume that the AI will always just go for a super effective move. Although it depends on the game and the way that the AI is coded, the AI will usually go for the move that does the most amount of damage, which isn't necessarily a super effective move. The AI has the advantage of knowing the exact damage that each of its moves will do based on your Pokémon stats, their Pokémon stats, and the random damage roll on that turn. For example, let's consider a scenario where you're fighting Cynthia's Garchomp with your Torterra. You might be inclined to think that Garchomp will always go for a Flamethrower, since fire is super effective to grass, but it turns out that Dragon Rush and Flamethrower have the exact same damage ranges into Torterra, at least in this example. So, if the AI rolls a low roll on Flamethrower and a high roll on Dragon Rush, then it will likely use Dragon Rush instead of Flamethrower. So suddenly, your Flash Fire Houndoom isn't a safe pivot. You can only be sure which move the AI will use if the lowest damage roll of one move is higher than the highest damage roll of every other move. And even then, it's not always guaranteed. For example, if an AI can kill your Pokémon with more than one move, it will generally just randomly pick between those moves, even if one of them always does more damage. Some AI seem to prefer using moves that drop stats or have a chance to induce status conditions or secondary effects, even if it isn't the perfect move. Short of using a damage calculator for every single battle, which requires knowing you and your opponent's exact EVs, IVs, and nature, predicting what your opponent is going to use and when moves likely have overlapping damage ranges requires a great deal of intuition, which simply comes with practice and experience. So expect to get predictions wrong every now and then, especially in the beginning. So before making a pivot, be sure to ask yourself how confident you are that your prediction is correct and then also ask yourself, what is the worst case scenario if you're wrong? Is the Pokémon you're using to pivot essential in an upcoming battle? Can it be one-shot by a move if your prediction is wrong? If so, maybe it isn't worth it to make that pivot. Remember, nuzlocking is all about minimizing risk. Another general pitfall is that the AI loves speed control. If your current Pokémon outspeeds the AI's Pokémon and it doesn't have a move that will kill it, the AI will more often than not use a move that lowers your Pokémon's speed, whether that be Thunder Wave, Rock Tomb, Mud Shot, or whatever. 
regardless of whether that's the move that does the most amount of damage. So be careful about accidentally switching into a speed control move. And one final warning is that when pivoting, be sure to not accidentally let your AI set up or heal for free, unless you plan around it. Always be aware of whether your opponent has a setup move, especially moves like Dragon Dance, and always be aware of whether your opponent will heal with an item. Sometimes, switching on a turn your opponent heals is a perfect way to get a Pokémon in for free, but if you aren't expecting it, it can really foil your plans, so be sure to double check if your opponent is in healing range before making your turn. With that, we've covered just about everything you need to know about pivoting, or at least everything that I was able to summarize in this video. As with most things, setting up and recognizing good pivots takes practice, so the only way you'll get better at it is by doing more Nuzlocks. But hopefully this video will help you as you hone your skills. If it did help, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Or don't. I don't know. But if you want more videos like this covering more Nuzlocke tips, make sure to let me know in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Nuzlocke content, and until then, remember to always, always, always play around the critical hit.